Hello everyone, it is me, guy from Russia here, back with another video. So anyways, I guess it's been a while since my last video, and I thought it would be nice to give you guys a little bit of an update, share what I've been up to, and kind of my recent adventures in the past couple months. I think it's been almost two months since my last video. And also, I would like to share some of the work that I've done on my website, denimintsayev.com. So anyways, <laughs> let's get right to it. Last time I made a video was around the time I was moving back to Russia from the UK, because I had finished my degree, and it was time for me to return. Since then, I spent a lot of my time working on my website and actually looking for a job. It's kind of funny because even though my degree is in Japanese studies, I was looking for work in web development. Actually, I didn't start web development that long ago. I think it was around the end of 2020 when I had just gotten to Japan, when I started learning JavaScript, which is basically the language that most of the internet is built on. And yeah, since then, I have learned a lot and decided that this would be the industry that I would go into, or at least where I would get started in my professional career. So yeah, I was looking for work as a front-end web developer. The front Front end basically just means the part of the website that you can see in your browser. Unfortunately, very recently, I think three weeks ago or something like that, uh, a certain situation has started in Russia. I mean, there was already a bit of a situation, but at that point, they started mobilizing troops to go help in the the thing and um, unrelated to that i had to leave russia so i am currently abroad i'm actually in turkey and i think i will be here for the foreseeable future but around the same time i actually had some good news which was that i actually got a couple interviews for some job opportunities and one of them i actually ended up passing and i got the job so i have now been working as a front-end web developer for two weeks of course this is remote Remote work but yeah I'm super excited about this and uh, I hope that I can progress in my career going forward but don't you worry I will continue making videos as you can see I am right now in fact I think I should be in an even better place to make videos now because I don't have any more moving around that I'm anticipating in the near future but you never know what could happen so the other thing that I wanted to talk about was my website and uh, what you're seeing right now is actually a completely rebuilt website website. So I had a bit of an issue since the thing started back in February. Uh, Wix has announced that they would stop service to users based in Russia, but credit where credit is due. They at least said that they would honor the existing subscriptions that their users had already paid for, and mine was running out in August. This is very much unlike Namecheap, whom I had my domain name registered with, who just completely said that you have to leave and move your domain name to a different registrar. So that was a whole issue for me. My website was down for... I think a week or two. But Wix, I'm not too mad at because they honored existing subscriptions. And most users in Russia can't really pay for a foreign-based service right now anyways. But I was actually planning on rebuilding my website eventually anyways. I wanted to test my web development skills that I had gained. And um, yeah, this, I guess, was a good motivation to do it sooner rather than later. And I actually got uh, an extra month out of it because their system just automatically started trying to charge users. And then it only disables your website after it's kind of failed a few times. I mean, it's not really fully disabled. Uh, you can still go to it through this link. I just can't tie it to my domain name. It has this massive banner here. And uh, honestly, I'm, I'm just kind of done with the old website. So once I fully rebuild all of the functionality of this one, I'm going to remove it. But I think uh, the most important functionality is already here. You can see the homepage is pretty much done. The section for the projects is missing uh, and also for the blog. But the blog page is empty anyways right now and so is the old patreon page so i'll have to work on those i did add a new section though collective counting so if you guys want you can come to my website and press the button yes let's let's count together guys <laughs> I don't know why I find it so amusing, but I just thought it would be a fun idea, so I did it. The projects page is also pretty bare right now, but the most important thing that I rebuilt is the kanji sorter, uh, so you guys can continue using this. Unfortunately, 
the saving of kanji lists in the cloud doesn't work right now. Uh, actually, user authentication doesn't work at all. You see, there's nowhere to sign in. But I will for sure add that back. I did make another method of saving your list, though, uh, which is in the browser. Uh, so if you don't clear your site data, your kanji list will be saved in your browser. I also think that it kind of just looks better in general right now. So let me do a little bit of a demonstration. Uh, we can go here and copy some text from an NHK article, paste it here and press get kanji. And then here we go. We get all of the information at once. You don't have to select the relevant sort type to get the corresponding information. You just get all of it. I don't really know why I didn't think to do it this way to begin with uh, on the old one, but honestly, the old one was pretty crap. I was just using a text box and kind of adding some characters to fill the text box with information. This is an actual table uh, and uh, I think it works way better. And uh, the same old things work. Uh, you can uh, filter stuff. And now I actually added a negative filter. So let's say you want everything but and four characters. You click that and you get all of the other levels of JLPT. And then let's say you are happy with what you have and you want to add the stuff that actually passed the filter. Uh, you just press add to list and you see 82 characters have been added. So now if I refresh, you can see that the list actually loads back in. And now you can do all the same things that you could do here in your kanji list. So let's say you want to see the kanji you have with the most strokes, you select stroke count and there you go. Uh, it's that one. So yeah, the only functionality that I have not rebuilt is the saving of your list in the cloud. And also there was a filter here that basically used whatever kanji were in the input here as a custom filter. So I still need to rebuild that. But yeah, all in all, I'd say I'm pretty happy with what I have now. I think that this will be a pretty good website when I finish it. And I think it would definitely be an improvement uh, compared to the old one. Maybe not a huge improvement, but the most important thing for me is that this was a great test of my web development skills. And I think I'm quite proud with even what I have already. So I think that's about everything that I wanted to talk about in this video. Before I go, I'd like to remind you guys that I also have a channel on Odyssey where you can see all of the same videos, but without the big watchful eye of Google. And also I'd like to thank my Patreon supporters, William and Minecraft Underground. Thank you guys for supporting me, even while I haven't made videos for a while. I did work a lot on the website though, so you guys have definitely supported me with that. And I'd like to thank anyone else who decides to become a patron. So that's about it. Thank you guys for watching and I'll see you in the next video.